Here's another variation of dermatofibroma. And look, very clearly from low power, you've got beautiful epidermal hyperplasia with that kind of flattened um, tabling along the uh, base of the reedy. And you've got a cellular spindle cell proliferation in the dermis, kind of a big one. Uh, that crack in the middle is just an artifact. Um, it just split when, when it was uh, being cut. And the edges are a little bit kind of fuzzy. The, the tumor is kind of trickling in between collagen at the edges, which again is usual finding in a dermatofibroma. And here there's a little tiny bit of uh, induction and there's a little, you can see this is a little tiny basaloid island that's got some dense kind of uh, cellular stroma around it. So it's like a little tiny uh, follicle root, a hair follicle root and a couple little baby sebaceous glands. And so you can have follicles or sebaceous glands or a mixture of those um, along with epidermal hyperplasia overlying dermatofibroma. Look over here, beautiful example of the entrapped collagen pattern that we see. You can see more cellular areas of the tumor over to the right. And then at the periphery, it fades out and trickles out into um, what looks more like kind of the atrophic form of dermatofibroma, where you have these dense collagen bundles and just individual little triangle-shaped or boomerang-shaped cells that are kind of trying to wrap around. See, each little collagen bundle is getting wrapped and trapped by the, um, the tumor cells. So that's a very characteristic pattern for um, dermatofibroma to see even a little area of this. And if you go to the middle of this lesion, it looks quite different. And that's, again, the key with these is looking at the edge, look at the periphery, the low power view, and then the periphery of the spindle cell infiltrate as it interfaces with normal dermis. To me, that's a really, really helpful way to help confirm that something's a dermatofibroma. Because if you just look at this at high power, and unless you have some experience, you might struggle and say, well, gosh, it's a kind of a cellular sheet of cells. Some of them are kind of large and plump and maybe even a little bit pleomorphic. And at higher power, you could certainly argue some of the cells are atypical. They've got uh, nucleoli, big nuclei, kind of vesicular open chromats in here, but you can have big hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells scattered in a dermatofibroma, no problem at all. But if you go right to high power, you're going to scare yourself. This is totally fine. All of the cytology here in my book is totally okay. Um, scattered mitotic figures, common finding in particularly in big um, kind of larger dermatofibromas like this one. So some people might call this a cellular dermatofibroma because it is hypercellular, but I personally don't like to use that term um, for lesions like this. I like them to have the intersecting fascicles of hypercellularity, which I'll show in another part of this video. And you know, look over here, look at this guy. I mean, that's a huge nucleus, right? And if you just had that alone, you might freak out, but in the context of the low power view of this lesion, this is totally fine for a dermatofibroma. Now also notice that the background here looks quite different. There are a lot of this dense pink collagen and it's forming these kind of rings and arcs or arches, kind of swirling and whirling in between the tumor cells. The very dense collagen, almost like basement membrane appearance, real dense collagen. And then also notice, it's a little hard to get on the video, but look at the abundant cytoplasm that's very pale that a lot of the cells have. It's kind of foamy. It's hard to appreciate the foaminess uh, again on the video, but maybe if we go to a different area, you can see there is foamy, a lot of foamy cytoplasm in the background of many of these cells. So this is what we call the lipidized subtype of dermatofibroma. And they tend to occur in the ankle or the lower leg, which is where this lesion was from. So they're also known as ankle type dermatofibroma. So ankle type or lipidized dermatofibroma have these rings and arches of real dense pink collagen and a lot of foamy cytoplasm. It can be so abundant in fact that some cases you can find areas that look very similar to xanthoma and the clue is the presence of the dense pink collagen which tells you that you're dealing with a lipidized DF, probably not a true xanthoma. And then the other thing, again, is going to low power and seeing the epidermal hyperplasia, tabling, and the areas of collagen entrapment at the periphery. And oftentimes you'll also see some foci of hemorrhage and hemocytorin deposition in the midst of these big um, ankle type dermatofibromas. So another variant to be aware of because it can look a little bit different, totally benign, just like other dermatofibromas. Here's one other example of an ankle type uh, dermatofibroma. You can see again the epidermis uh, acanthotic with uh, blunting at the bottom. Um, and this one I think displays uh, even more obviously than the last one. I'll flip the 
the condenser and get it out of focus. Look at those little arcs and uh, little ribbons kind of of dense, dense pink hyalinized collagen here. And in between those are these cells with pale cytoplasm. Those are the foamy xanthomatous cells. Go closer, you can see it again. So it kind of makes these rings and arcs and you can really see it if you flip your condenser and get kind of out of focus here. The rings and arcs of pink collagen. And then we'll get it into focus. And you can much better appreciate that in between that really sclerotic collagen, we've got really abundant foamy cytoplasm in these histiocytoid cells. And that's again characteristic of uh, the, the lipidized type of dermatofibroma, which tends to occur on the lower leg or the ankle. So we sometimes call it ankle type. Um, if you like to use that kind of name. And so a really good, really good example of that. And you can see just how foamy that is. If you only had small areas of it, you might not recognize that you were dealing with a dermatofibroma. You might think that you had actually a xanthoma. You can see they're actually little, let's see if I can get it onto the, to show up here. Maybe we'll go one higher. You can see there really are little tiny vacuoles, little bubbles of lipid that are indenting and scalloping the nucleus right here in this, in this uh, histiocyte here in the middle. And so that's uh, very characteristic of xanthomatous or foamy histiocytes. So we have true foamy histiocytes in abundance here, just like you'd have in a xanthoma. But these um, rings and arcs of dense sclerotic pink collagen in the background and the anatomic site as well as the fact that if you have the epidermis or the periphery of the lesion, you will see epidermal changes and other changes that will show you you're dealing with the dermatofibroma. Like right here, we're seeing nice, a uh, nice little bit of collagen entrapment here, and then we've got the epidermal change. So those things can help you realize that you're dealing with uh, a DF rather than a xanthoma. And although both lesions are benign, some xanthomas are, you know, associated with uh, lipid abnormalities in the serum. And so there's no need to get worried about that if you just have a lipidized DF. Uh, to my knowledge, they're not associated with lipid abnormalities. So uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button to let me know. And if you uh, haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you uh, like these videos, please do that so you'll be notified of new videos as I post them. Thanks for watching.